pangalan mo ay kaligtasan ko ang iyong kaharian ang aking atika o Diyos sa langit mo'y maghari ka sa unan ang kaguluhan tinig mo ay May bagong kagalakan Ang tanging mananatili Ay ang iyong sinabi Sa kataas-taasan Ikaw pa rin ang hari O Diyos sa langit ko'y maghari ka Maghari ka Maghari ka, Jesus Sundin Sundin ang loob
Stars erupted in place. Stars erupted in praise. We stand in awe of you. We stand in awe of you. Here in your presence, we set our eyes on you. We stand in Yeah. 
grace Your mercy amazes me under your wings Your shadow covers me, a promise of love But my heart is safely undone Speak to me, Lord, your servant is listening over the noise I hear you whispering My hope has come And my heart is safely undone I found my fortress in you And my soul is anchored with you My resting place is in your name forever safe speak to me lord your servant is listening over the noise i hear you whispering my hope has come and my heart is safely undone in you and my soul is anchored with you my resting place is in your name I found my fortress in you and my soul is anchored with you my resting Psalms 23 verse 6 it says here surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever 
this is a very good prayer uttered by uh, the psalmist. And we could also declare this in our uh, personal lives, in our families as well. A few more days and we are about to wrap up 2021 and we're about to embrace a new year. So many things have happened this 2021. Alam ko yung iba sa atin, gusto na natin yung, uh, pwedeng naging kanta natin yung wake me up when 2021 ends. And yet, you know, reading this scripture, it gives us so much confidence, so much hope that the Lord will continue to be with us as we embrace a new year, that we could continue to claim. Surely, sabi niya, siguradong sigurado siya na yung goodness and mercy ni God will be with him whatever situation that he is facing. And that is also something that we could also claim in our lives. Thank you so much, Lord God, that you are with us, Lord. Just as we have um, been talking about the past weeks, you are a God who is near to your people. You are a God who listens to our prayers. Thank you, God, that, Lord, we can claim your promise. Indeed, Lord God, goodness and mercy shall follow us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God who is faithful to us. You are a God who would delight to do good to your people. And we can, Lord God, face, Lord God, the new year with so much hope, Lord God. Alam namin, God, na kasama ka namin. So we bless you, Lord, today. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. A blessed and fruitful Sunday to all of you. Maraming maraming salamat for joining us once again in our Sunday online worship service. You can worship with us at RBC Cable Masters Community Channel at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. You can also join us at our Facebook page and also at our YouTube channel. It's 27 days more to go before our much-awaited Christmas Day. Hayaan nyo po na ako po ay babati sa inyo ngayon ng Merry Christmas. Batiin mo na rin yung katabi mo ng Advance Merry Christmas. Tanungin mo na rin kung ano yung regalo na nakahanda para sa iyo. Kung tatanungin nyo po kung anong regalo ko po para sa inyo, nako po, ito lang po ang pwede kong mabigay. Uh, unlimited prayers. So, Today, we are on our series break. We're gonna be talking about life in abundance and to preach to us the word, let us all welcome our discipleship pastor, Pastor Jose Sario Poblete. Thank you, Ms. Janina. Good day, everyone. Again, we want to welcome you at our online worship service here at the Victory Christian Fellowship to Gigarao. I hope you are doing well as you are joining us in our uh, worship today. And some of you might be wondering why we are still uh, meeting online when in fact that uh, the number of cases in the city has dramatically decreased below 100. At alam nyo na po ang sagot namin dyan. We want you to be safe. But uh, that time that we are dreaming to physically meet together is about to come. Malapit na po. We will have a tryout this December during our worship time. Pero ang isang requirement po dyan, kailangan bakunado po tayo. That's why we encourage you to join our National Vaccination uh, Days that will be tomorrow up to December 1. Kaya punta na po kayo doon para siguradong makakasama namin po kayo sa physical na gathering po natin. Since uh, this is a Series Break Sunday, as mentioned by Miss Janina, I will speak to you today something that is close to my heart because we used to declare these things to you every Sunday. Kasama po yan sa benediction natin, yung declare natin yung abundance para sa inyo. Pero tanong ko lang po, ano po yung picture dyan sa isip nyo kapag sinabing life in abundance? Siguro yung mga iba... Uh, buffet table ang nakikita nila. Yung mga iba naman, it's a vacation grande kung saan man yung mga pinapangarap nilang lugar na mabisita. O yung mga iba, yung mga bago at magagandang sakay. At yung mga iba naman ay bagong bahay, malalaking bahay. Di pa ba? Okay yon. that's a uh, sign of abundance. Ano? But uh, let us see what the Bible says about uh, Life in abundance. Kaya balikan lang po natin yung sinabi ko kanina doon sa declare natin 
In fact, uh, my children are already familiar with this verse that we used to declare to you in Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. Nang sabi namin palagi, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Baka kararating mo lang kapatid, pag open mo lang ngayon ng TV o kaya gadget mo, baka sabihin mo, ay tapos na. Hindi. Gusto ko lang pong i-explain ngayon dito pagkakataong ko po na ma-explain sa inyo. You know what? This benediction is a declaration of life of abundance to you. Kaya nakita po natin dyan, yung blessing ni Lord ay dapat mapunta sa inyo. Ito po yung inutos ni God kay Moses that He will declare to uh, the people of Israel at that time. And we are doing that every Sunday to you, giving you the blessing of God. Alam niyo po yung sinabi niyan sa last verse, sa verse 26, the Lord turn His face toward you is God showing His favor to you. Ano man yung mga kakailanganin mo, yung pag nag-turn ang uh, mukha ng Diyos sa inyo, sigurado na yung favor niya magpo-flow sa inyo. And also, the word there, and give you peace, yung peace po niyan, sa Aramaic uh, word or Hebrew language, it means shalom. At ang ibig pong sabihin ng shalom sa langwahe na po natin ngayon, it means wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility. It means nothing is missing, nothing is lacking. Yun po ang picture ng abundance na gusto ng Diyos sa atin. And of course, the Lord Jesus Himself declared that in John chapter 10, verse 10, when He said, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Si Jesus mismo, ano, ang nagsabi doon sa atin. But does it mean to say na mga material blessing ang bibigay ng Diyos sa atin? I doubt. Kasi ang Diyos o kaya ang Panginoong Jesus dapat pumunta sa atin as the richest man on earth. Pero hindi niya ginawa yun. Also, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, it says there, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Napakaganda. Gusto ng Diyos na in all areas, di ba, na ma-bless tayo at may purpose niya po dyan. Yan ay para mag, uh, magkaroon tayo ng maraming oras na gumawa ng mga mabubuting gawain para sa Diyos natin. Also, uh, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, I like this. It says there, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. Yung sinabing all po dyan, kasama po yung health, yung wealth, at sa spiritual life natin. Napakaganda. Again, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21, Sabi po dyan, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or imagine according to the power that work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. We can see in these verses that we have a God who wants to bless us. But you know what? These same verses that we've just read has been abused by some people who wants to make money out of the goodness of God. Ito yung po yung mga sinasabi nating prosperity theology or mga prosperity uh, churches. Wala na pong silang ibang pinag-usapan kundi about prosperity, about those verses, parang pag hindi ka na naging abundant, parang hindi ka na anak ng Diyos. Ayaw po natin ng ganon. Kaya gusto natin ng, na makita yung kabuuan nang sinasabi sa Biblia when we talk about abundance. That's why we want to look at what God has been saying in the Old Testament through the prophet Isaiah that were echoed by the Lord Jesus and the apostles. So kaya balikan po natin ang sinasabi sa book of Isaiah. Although this is a serious break, gusto kong balikan pa rin natin ang book of Isaiah kasi yun po ang libro na inaaral natin ngayon. And I also encourage you to go back to the book of Isaiah and really uh, immerse yourself with the words of God there. Let me read to you Isaiah 55 verses 1 to 13. Medyo mahaba-haba po ito but again, I encourage you to uh, follow with me on your screen. 
or kung may Bible po kayo dyan, mas maganda. Okay, sabi po dito, in beginning verse 1, Who, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me, hear and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely they shall call a nation you do not know, and nations you do not know, you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. To our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your word. And as I explain it, To my brothers and sisters, I ask for your blessing that uh, you open their spiritual ears and minds, Lord, that they may know you better through these words that I'm going to explain today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I like the title given by the Bible scholars who wrote the New King James Version about uh, Isaiah 55 because the title they gave to this chapter is An Invitation to an Abundant Life. Doon ko po actually kinuha yung title ng preaching natin ngayon. At gusto nating tignan yung tatlo na iniimbitahan ng Diyos na magkaroon ng abundant life. Ang una po dito is those who have nothing. Look at that. Napakaganda po, ano? Na kapag walang-wala ka pala, ikaw yung imbitado na gusto ng Diyos na magkaroon ng abundant life. Let's go back to verse 1. It says here, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. The Aramaic word in the beginning of this chapter, uh, the word ho, means in our language today as an intensive call. It means to say, parang uh, Pilipino lang na uh, isang nanay na pagod na magluto at pagkatapos niyang uh, ihain yun sa lamesa, nahihirapan pa rin siyang magtawag ng uh, kakain. Kaya sa Pilipino yon may kasamang why doon sa ho. Dahil medyo intense, intense na si nanay na magtawag ng kasama niya. Okay? So, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, sabi po niya. In the Old Testament, the word thirsty po means a desire that uh, needs to be satisfied. And also, the waters there is a metaphor for salvation. So, there is an intense desire for people to experience salvation because as we know, this word were uttered to the exile in Babylon. Alam ng Diyos na gusto na nilang makawala sa kanilang uh, pagkaalipin o pagka-exile sa Babylon and God is offering them. But that is not just for salvation from their conquerors, but God is offering them a bigger blessing that is not just physical salvation but also spiritual salvation. 
But in the New Testament, we see that the Lord Jesus Christ is offering a water to the thirsty. And He said that in John chapter 4, verse 14, when He was talking to the Samaritan woman, that uh, He's offering a water that uh, when you drink it, you will never go thirsty again. And we can also read that in Revelation chapter 21 and 22, that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is offering that water to everyone who is thirsty. And He's inviting everyone. And we're so glad that we responded. That's why we are the product of that invitation. We are enjoying this salvation that God has given to mankind because we accepted that gift that God is offering to us. At sinabi po niya ulit dito, And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. It's very ironic po, ano? Alam po natin na kapag ikaw ay inimbatahan na bumili, dapat may pera ka. That, that is what our uh, business people are doing. They uh, compete uh, calling you to come into their businesses to buy. They're offering 70 uh, 80%, but uh, you know, they still make money from uh, that kind of offer. Pero tignan po natin dito, ang offer ng Diyos, kahit wala kang pera, ibibigay po niya yung kailangan mo. He will satisfy you with that desire, with that thing that you want to buy. And sabi niya ulit dito, yes, come buy wine and milk. Yan po sa ancient Judea, that is their staple food. So, alam ng Diyos na napaka-importante sa kanila yun. Kaya yun ang sinabi niya. Without money and without price. Bakit po niya sinabi na kahit wala kang pera, walang presyo ito na ibibigay ko sa inyo. As we have read in uh, Psalms 49 verses 7 to 9, ang sabi po dito ng uh, psalmist, Truly, no man can ransom another or give to God the price of his life. For the ransom of their life is costly and can never suffice that he should live on forever and never see the pit. Makita po natin na ang ino-offer ng Diyos po dito ay salvation. Pero alam din niya na walang makakakaya na magbayad. Dahil nga, sabi mismo ng salmist, it's a very costly thing to uh, redeem somebody's life. And it's only God who can give it. That's why He's offering it for free to us. May mga tao po na nagsasabi na dahil sa kanilang mabubuting gawa, ay pwede naman silang pupunta sa langit. Uh, thinking that they can buy salvation with their good works. But Apostle Paul corrected us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 when he said, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God not of works, lest anyone should boast. So makita po natin na yung ino-offer ng Diyos na salvation sa atin ay regalo niya. Hindi sa pamamagitan ng mga mabubuting gawain natin, kung ano pa yung mga naibigay mo sa church, ano man yung mga naitulong mo sa tao, yun ay passes mo na pupunta sa langit. Sinasabi po ni Apostle Paul na hindi. Dahil yon ay hindi pwedeng kabayaran ng ating uh, kaligtasan. But uh, as uh, mentioned by uh, Apostle Peter in 1 Peter 18, 19, knowing that we were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but the precious blood of Christ like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. That it is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was used as a mode of exchange. Hindi po natin kaya yon, Kaya binagay na lang ng Diyos na libre sa atin. Kaya tayo ngayon na nakareceive ng uh, uh, regalo ng Diyos, we can say that we have this abundant life now. It is not the things that we have in uh, this life, the, ma the material things, but we know that we were destined to go to hell. But with that gift that God has given to us, our life has extended. It has overflowed to the life eternal. Hindi lang dito yung buhay na natin ngayon, kundi nag-extend sa eternity. 
ganun po kalaki ang blessing ng Diyos sa atin. Dati nga, because of our uh, previous way of life, we are destined to go to hell. But with the gift that God has given to us, with that blood of the Lord Jesus Christ poured out for us, we are now assured of that eternal life. That's the most important thing that we have today that we can say we have this abundant life. Period na tayo dapat doon, mga kapatid. But there are circumstances in life that uh, it seems we, have, we are not enjoying that abundant life. Because as we know uh, from the book of Job, Satan would ask permission from God to do those uh, things that uh, may not be favorable on us. Nakita natin sa buhay ni Job, nagpaalam ang demonyo na ites kung hanggang saan ang pagmamahal ng uh, kanyang anak sa kanyang ama. At uh, we know this story that uh, Job was experiencing material wellness, but later the devil came and stole all those things. But again, he did not give up his faith and the Lord Being uh, a gracious God who was uh, so proud of Job, he restored all the wealth that was taken by the enemy away from him. So makita natin may kalaban po tayo na ang ginagawa ay uh, manira as uh, said by the Lord Jesus Christ in John 10 verse 10 that the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. Nandyan po siya, yun ang ginagawa niya. Yun ang bisyo niya, yun ang trabaho ng demonyo. But when the Lord Jesus Christ came, He said, I came that I may give you life, a life in abundance. So, ibig sabihin po, mangyari man yung mga trabaho ng demonyo, kapag tinanggap na natin ang Panginoong Jesus, that abundant life that uh, God has given to us will never be taken away from us. Kaya ang sigurang mga tanong ng iba, those who are experiencing uh, physical, emotional, or even uh, uh, mental challenge because of uh, the pressures that uh, we are experiencing brought about by this pandemic, or because of uh, AIDS-related uh, uh, illnesses, baka sabihin ng iba, wala na yung abundance na binigay ng Diyos sa atin. And to illustrate more about that, I'd like to share to you stories of uh, some of our brothers and sisters who are experiencing uh, unfavorable condition now, especially on their health. Una po dito si Kuya Emong Ponsalan. Some of you knows that uh, this uh, person used to uh, be with us in the church. Uh, kasama palagi dyan sa asering o kung anumang ministry na uh, pwede niyong gawin, kasama po natin si Kuya Emong. But uh, he's now in his sick bed for almost two years now. But uh, can we say that uh, with that uh, time that uh, he's in his sick bed, he has lost that abundant light that God has given to him? I believe no. Because God has given him a loving wife and also loving children. Yan, kaya uh, God has been miraculously providing uh, that care that uh, Kuya Emong uh, needs every day with that two years that he's in his sick bed. And God is also providing miraculously uh, to his children. Imagine nyo, si Jilson ngayon dyan, may dalawang uh, gadget instead na isa lang. O oh, bless ni Lord dyan sa kanila. Another one is Ate Emma and Rile. During the early years of this church, they were the only few business people in the church. But now she's also in her sickbed for almost one year now. But you know what? God has blessed her with a daughter, doctor, who is taking care of her right now. God has been showing her grace to her that even she's been unconscious for one year, nandyan pa rin po siya. And uh, her family is still believing and this church is still believing that uh, one day she will be able to recover from that illness. So, makita natin ang mga kapatid nating ito, uh, they've been so faithful serving the Lord in, uh, in every way they could. But uh, can we say that uh, they've lost abundance with these people around them, with this family that uh, is uh, serving them, with this church praying for them? I believe 
they are living in a life of abundance. And I am here today to testify that I am one of their overflow of their abundance. You know, Kuya Emong in the late 90s would uh, often come to my school in uh, Linao National High School when I was still a teacher there. And because I could not uh, join the discipleship classes conducted in the church because of the distance of the school to the church, he would religiously come to my apartment and teach me those lessons one-to-one. -one. Ganun po yung sacrificio ni Kuya Emong sa akin. And uh, because he's uh, my cell group leader, yung po ang tawag namin sa victory group uh, natin ngayon, he would uh, pour out his heart to me. His devotion, his love for God, he transferred those things. He deposited those things to me. That's why I have uh, uh, grown in my spiritual life. And how about Ate Emma? You know, as, mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, they were the first few business people in the church. And when I learned to do business, kasi tinuruan tayo ni Pastor Ross kung paano magnegosyo, I have to help the family because uh, as a father who have felt the pressure of raising a family, kailangan ko bubili ng uh, diapers, ng mga gatas, ng uh, dalawang anak ko na at that time. You know what? The first people in my prospect list are Kuya Wally and Ate Emma. I will always, uh, whenever I have a product, I will, I will see to it that I will visit them first and offer to them the, my product, this multivitamins, this coffee, this uh, uh, green tea. Alam nyo, i-explain ko yung uh, uh, mga benefits kay uh, Kuya Wale. Pag naubusan na ako ng word, sabihin ko na lang, basta Kuya, uh, parang lucky me lang yan. Ang daming benefits. Yan, matatawa si Kuya Wale at saka si Ate Emma. At uh, paglabas ni Ate Emma sa, galing sa kanyang kwarto, Ang sasabihin niya, oh, Joe, magkano ba yan? Tapos, ibibigay na lang sa akin yung cash. At alam nyo, may take home pa. Bibigyan pa ako niyan ng uh, milk candy na papasalubong ko sa aking mga anak. And you know, I am an overflow of the goodness of uh, the Enrile family. Lalo na kay Ate Emma. So you see that this brother and sister who are experiencing challenge in their physical being now, are continually overflowing in their abundance with those things that uh, uh, they have done during those days that uh, they were still experiencing those uh, physical blessing of God. And our prayer is for them to receive that same blessing also that was uh, given to uh, Job when the Lord restored the wealth that uh, uh, God has given to him. And we will continue to pray for Kuya Emong and Ate Emma that they will uh, have a restoration on their health. God bless you, Kuya Emong and uh, Ate Emma. And if we have brothers and sisters who are experiencing same challenges in their life today, be assured that having the Lord Jesus Christ in your life is the greatest sign of abundance in you. And again, I would like to echo to you the message shared to us by one of our visitors in the early 2000s when he said, if we have everything but Christ, we have nothing. But if we have nothing but Christ, we have everything. Second uh, thing that uh, we would like to see here is that those people who are invited for an abundant life are those who diligently listen to Him. Yung uh, unang puntos po natin kanina na kapag tinanggap po ang Panginoong Yesus, yun na po ang abundant life na sinasabi natin. But there are extras that God has given to us as uh, He mentioned here in Isaiah 55 verses 2 and 3. Ang sabi po dito, Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. So makita po natin dito na kapag ang Panginoong Yesus ay pumasok sa ating buhay, 
sigurado na po na abundant yung buhay natin. But uh, see, there is a question posed by God to us here. Na kapag meron uh, inentrust sa atin, saan natin ginagamit? Para masagot po natin yan ng tama, kailangan makinig tayo ng uh, maayos sa ating Panginoong Yesus. Kaya ang sabi niya dito, listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Napaka-importante po na makinig tayo. Ano yung mga sinasabi ng Diyos sa atin? Ano ba yung mga pinagkatiwala sa atin ng Diyos na resources sa atin? Sabi niya dito, why do you spend money for what is not bread? In other translation, yung wages po dyan is labor. So we may have skills, we may have uh, resources that uh, God has entrusted to us. Saan natin ginagamit? Are we using these things to satisfy us. Alam po natin na kapag yun ay ginamit natin na pinambili ng bagong sakay, pagkatapos ng uh, mga ilang buwan, wala na po yung satisfaction natin. It died down. Bumili ka ng mas magandang bahay, ganun din. At kapag nagbakasyon ka, pagdating mo, pagod ka. So is that a satisfaction that uh, we are saying? If you can have the material things and the desires of man today, I believe it's not because uh, we know that the Bible says in uh, Ecclesiastes that uh, the person who experienced all these things in this life said that all these things are meaningless. Alam po natin na ang isang uh, bagay na nagsasasatisfy po sa atin yan ay kung gamitin natin ang mga resources na binigay ng Diyos sa atin para i-bless sa ibang tao. And we know that uh, we have a means in the church to do that. That is by faithfully giving our tithes and offerings. And I believe when we faithfully do that, it will uh, give us its satisfaction not only in this life, but we know that uh, when we give, those people who have uh, generously give to the church already, they know what I'm saying that uh, that satisfaction level would transcend to what uh, satisfaction that uh, the world could offer to us. There is one story that I read about uh, John D. Rockefeller Sr. that when he was in early 50s, he was diagnosed with uh, a severe illness. You know, that uh, he was the richest man during that time. And when he started giving away his money, to the poor, to the charities, his health was restored. And he died at the good old age of 97 because of that. So that may be a way for us to restore our health. Kung ikaw, kapatid, may mga challenges sa health mo, baka pwede mong tularan yan na kung ano man yung mga meron ka, ibigay mo. It may not be money just like uh, John D. Rockefeller, but you can start giving your talents, your services uh, in the form of uh, volunteer work or ministry in the church. At yun po ang uh, pwede nating panggabitan sa mga resources na binigay ng Diyos sa atin. But again, it says there, listen carefully and eat what is good. Kailangan lang nating maintindihan maigi that God is speaking to us that God is uh, leading us to do what is right. If we want an abundant life that comes from God, kailangan pong uh, masigasig tayo. It says there, diligently we have to do our part. We have to make an extra effort to listen to God. Ano po yung mga circumstances, kapatid, na nangyayari sa buhay mo? I hope that we will make it a daily practice to really listen to God in our meditation, in our uh, time of prayer and uh, devotion to God, we will listen and let us observe around us what God is uh, uh, allowing us to experience. Kaya maaral sana natin kung ano yung gustong ipagawa ng Diyos sa atin. Gusto mong mag-prosper? You pray for that. You want to uh, do or enter in this business? You pray about it and see, observe around you what God is telling you to do. Baka gusto mong mag-abroad, kumita rin ng mas magandang uh, pera sa labas, but God is allowing you to experience series of events that is not favorable to that target. 
I hope that we will have that wisdom. We will have that mind of Christ to understand that God can prosper us anywhere. Hindi natin ipagpilit kung ano yung gusto nating gawin sa buhay natin. But we will listen diligently to God because I believe that God can prosper you anywhere. Malamang narinig nyo na po yung istorya ni Pastor Ross na uh, there were times that uh, he's being called up in Manila to uh, pastor churches there na higit na mas mayaman sa church natin dito but he remained because he heard a word from God that uh, he has to remain, he has to stay in the church. And those were those times na napakahirap pa ang maglakad dyan sa kalsada natin bako-bako. Wala pang mga negosyo, wala pang mga establishmento na uh, magpapasaya sa mga tao dito sa Tugigaraw. But you see, God has prospered him. God has allowed him to experience that life of abundance because of his ability to listen to God. And I hope we will be able to uh, copy that, my brothers and sisters. I'd like also to tell a story about uh, one of our brothers and sisters here who are new in the church. Some of you have not uh, met him personally because we've just met uh, them too when we dedicated their uh, son in July of this year. I'm referring to Nilo and Frida Kangkaida. Uh, mga pamangkin po ni Edwin at saka ni Jing Sese ang mga to. They were a member of our church in Victory, Manila. But uh, because of the pressures of uh, raising uh, their son, uh, alam po natin dito sa church na next to God is our family. Dahil po sa pressure ng pagtatrabaho sa Manila, nakita nila na napapabayaan na nila ang kanilang anak dahil pinagkakatiwala lang nila sa mga kapitbahay nila o yung mga kamag-anak nila. And they made the decision to uh, give up their job and go back to uh, the city and reside here and raise up their family here. It was hard in the start because uh, Nilo has no job and same is true with uh, uh, Frida. Nag-apply sila ng uh, mga trabaho nila dito, pero hindi sila pinalad. But uh, lately, Frida was able to get a job at the uh, provincial uh, government of uh, Cagayan because she's an engineer by profession. And Nilo continued this passion to do clay molding, and the Lord blessed the work of His hands. Alam niyo po, yung last na pag-uusap namin uh, Sunday ago, he was uh, reporting to us na uh, fully booked na siya. Super ang pag-bless ni Lord sa kanila, sa kanyang negosyo na fully booked na siya hanggang February. And he was saying that he's now earning money more than what he is making at the time that he was still an employee in Manila. So ganun po ang uh, pagbigay ng Diyos ng abundance sa atin. If we would just listen to Him diligently, kung ano yung pinapagawa ng Diyos sa atin. Kung kailangan mag-move sa lugar na to, o ano man yung mga kailangan mong isurrender, o ano man yung mga kailangan mong ibigay sa Kanya, yung mga ambisyon mo ba, yung mga pangarap mo ba, o kaya may mga gawain ka na uh, hindi ka lugod-lugod sa Diyos, baka yun ang mga ibigay mo sa Kanya para ma-experience mo yung abundance na naiprepare niya sa iyo. Third thing that I'd like to share to you is this. Abundant life is given to those who seek and call upon Him. Again, in Isaiah 55 verses 6 to 9, it says here, Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake His way and the unrighteous His thoughts. Let Him return to the Lord and He will have mercy on Him. To our God, for He will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Alam nyo po, uh, ang sinasabing seek the Lord there in the Bible, it means reading the Bible thoroughly. Alam po natin yung mga Jews mismo, yan ang ginagawa nila. Because that is the meaning of uh, that word in their language, in their Hebrew language, na para magkaroon sila ng buhay, kailangan nilang basahin, 
palagi ang salita ng Diyos dahil doon magkakaroon sila ng buhay. But you know what? It's the Lord Jesus Christ who corrected them in John chapter 5, verse 39 when He said, You search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of Me. Sinasabi dito ng ating Panginoong Yesus na ang salita ng Diyos ay Siya mismo. Siya yung buhay na sinasabi dito. That's why, uh, again, in John chapter 14, verse 6, ang sabi niya, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Siya po ang buhay na uh, makukuha natin. That's why when we read the Bible, it's the Lord Jesus Christ that we will meet there. And we will experience His love. We will know more about His love when we read the Bible. But I hope that when we say we love the Lord, we want to obey His word. Because He said in Luke 11.28, But He said, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Pag sinabi natin, mahal natin ng Diyos, sana ipamuhay natin yon, mga kapatid. Dahil lang sabi ng Diyos, mapalad ang mga tao na gumagawa. Hindi lang basta marinig natin ang kanyang salita, kundi i-apply natin mismo sa ating buhay. So we will be able to appreciate what God is saying here that His thoughts is higher than our thoughts and His ways are ways. That's why it's very important for us to develop a love for the Word because uh, we know that uh, by doing so, God will be able to Uh, share His mind to us because He said that His ways is higher than our ways and His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Kaya saan pa po tayo? Saan tayo magbe-base ng uh, mga desisyon natin? Kundi sa Kanyang salita mismo. Dahil sinabi pa niya dito that when we claim on His promises, it will surely come to us because it will surely accomplish what He intended for His Word. And I, we believe that that is for us. That is for uh, our advantage when we lift up everything and base our decisions from the Word of God. One of the classic examples that uh, we used to tell in this church, and I believe some of you have uh, heard his testimony uh, before, it's about uh, one of our friends who used to teach in one of the universities here in Tugigarao. His students shared the gospel to him, but uh, he demanded that it should be their pastor to share the gospel to them. And the senior pastor visited him and prayed for him, and eventually gave up his life to Christ. And during the course of time, he gave up his uh, profession to work as uh, one of the employees of uh, a business entity. And... Uh, also, during uh, those uh, days, he experienced some uh, ups and downs in his finances because of uh, a financial mistake. Alam ko po dahil nakasama ko siya dyan. <laughs> and, you know, he continued to uh, serve the Lord in every way. He remained faithful to God. And the Lord showed His goodness to him because he is a true disciple of Christ. He hold on to his faith no matter what uh, is happening in his life. Uh, kapag tinatanong ko siya dati uh, kung may plano pa siyang magkabahay, ang sabi niya palagi, hayaan mo na para sa mga anak ko na lang yan. May mga, ano pa yung mga pangarap mo, hayaan mo na, ibigay na lang natin sa mga anak natin yan. But you know what? The Lord prospered him. The Lord turned his face upon him and gave him that peace. Lately, he was elected as uh, one of the board of regents of CSU and he just built his house and he transferred to that house just a month ago. And I'm referring to our good manager of Lighthouse Cooperative, Sir Arthur Tabu. Alam niyo po na isa ito sa mga uh, hinahangaan natin na uh, membro ng ating church because of his devotion, because of his love to God. He is one of our worship service coordinators po, lalo na sa 8 a.m. service na inaatendahan po ninyo. That is how God uh, show His love to those people who uh, continually seek Him and call for Him. Yung mga tao na kontento na sa 
uh, abundance na binigay ng Diyos sa kanila. But because they called, because they seek the Lord, God fulfilled that uh, promise when He said that those who seek Him, those who call upon Him, He will prosper them. At uh, ikaw, kapatid, baka may mga uh, hinihingi mo rin kay God na wala pa ngayon. You see that uh, our brothers and sisters did not immediately have those prosperity or those uh, abundance that they are experiencing now. But because they remained faithful to God, because they hold on to God. Ayaw natin na mamiss nyo yung uh, overflow ng abundance ng Diyos sa inyo dahil nag-give up kayo. And because you stopped seeking the Lord. I hope you can take encouragement from uh, the life of our brothers and sisters who are enjoying that overflow of the abundance of our salvation with this material thing that uh, they are enjoying today. That can also happen to you. Just remain faithful to God. Just remain seeking. Just remain calling upon the Lord. Because as uh, the Word of God says, it will accomplish what the Lord has purpose for His Word. Kaya mga kapatid, kung ano man yung pinanghawa ka mo ng promesa ng Diyos, hold on to that promise. Seek the Lord and call upon Him. For it will surely accomplish what it intends to accomplish in our life. And as we end, let me continue reading in verse 12 and 13. For it says here, For you shall go out with joy and be led out of with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree. And instead of the briar shall come out up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Napakaklaro po dyan kung bakit gusto ni Lord na ma-experience natin ang kanyang abundance. Because when we come out from the bondage of sin, we will come out with joy and be led forth with peace. Meron yung tuwa, meron yung uh, peace na hinahanap ng tao. Makikita nila mismo yon sa buhay natin. And when we do that, it says here, the mountain and the hills, kung ano man yung mga nasa paligid po natin, sila rin po ay magsasaya. And you know the result of that. When the Lord prosper us, people around us will be drawn to God. Hindi, hopefully, hindi sa atin nakasentro yung uh, uh, glory, kundi ibinibigay natin sa Diyos yan. We will continually acknowledge that all these things came from God. And it will also bring salvation to them because they've seen how God has poured out His abundance to us. First, in the spiritual realm, secondary na lang po yung mga material na blessing na nare-receive po natin. Because it says there in verse 13, And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. May the Lord be continually be glorified as you prosper, not only in your spiritual life, but also in the physical and uh, financial life. May the Lord prosper you always. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we just uh, want to thank you, O oh God, for your reminder that uh, we are living a life in abundance once that uh, we have received you as the Lord, the Master of our life. As we receive that gift, that you are offering, O oh God. We are already complete. We are already assured of that eternal life that you are offering to everyone. And uh, Lord, no matter what uh, challenges or unfavorable circumstances that we may, we may go through in this life, Lord, those are nothing compared to that eternal life that you have already assured to us. But we also pray for that uh, prayer of the psalmist in Psalms 27 when he said that I'm still confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Lord, that uh, my brothers and sisters who are experiencing challenges in their finances and in their uh, physical being, we just pray that uh, blessing uh, as uh, the psalmist wrote in Psalms 27 that you will allow them to see your goodness. Prosper them, Lord, financially. Heal those who are sick, Lord, that they may see your goodness also. And uh, Father, I pray that everyone 
whom you have blessed will continually find satisfaction in uh, those uh, blessings that you have given to them by giving it back to you, by using it for the advancement of the kingdom, that they will be faithful in giving their tithes and offerings. Lord, that they will use those uh, financial blessings to bless those people around them. And also for my brothers and sisters to continually seek you, to listen diligently to you, because we know that uh, you have the best things in mind for us. Lord, that you want us to bless us in all areas of our lives. And thank you that uh, it is you, the God that we serve, who delights in our well-being. Second group of people that uh, I want to pray is uh, the people that uh, God is inviting in a point number one. Those who have nothing, but uh, they also want that abundant life that God is offering. Kaya ikaw kapatid, hindi aksidente na nanonood ka sa worship service na ito dahil gusto kang bigyan ni Lord ng uh, abundant life. He is offering that abundant life to you today. The only thing that you need is to receive it. And to do that, let me lead you in this simple prayer. Follow this simple prayer if you are serious of uh, receiving that abundant life that comes from the Lord. Say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I want that life, that abundant life that you are offering to me. And I know I'm not worthy to receive it. But as you have said that you are giving it for free to me, I gladly accept it. And now I ask for your forgiveness, O oh God. When you said that you will abundantly pardon, I ask for your forgiveness today. Cleanse my heart from all the sins that I have committed, things that the Bible calls sin. Wash away my heart, O oh God. Forgive all my sins. And right now, I receive you as the Lord, Master, and Leader of my life. And help me to live for you, Lord Jesus, for the rest of my life. And I ask your Holy Spirit to help me live a life that will glorify and honor you always. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Under your grace, your mercy amazes me. Under your wings, your shadow covers me. Your promise of love, when my heart is safely undone. Speak to me, Lord, your servant is listening Over the noise, I hear you whispering My hope has come, and my heart is safely undone I found my fortress in you and my soul Yeah.
Before we go, our 34th church anniversary will be this coming December 4 and December 5, 2021. Tama po yung narinig nyo? Next Saturday and next Sunday na po yan. So, sino pong kasing excited ko sa ating 34th church anniversary na ko? Sobrang exciting po ito kasi we, or we are celebrating it for two days. So, Saturday, please take note of this. Our... Um, Saturday celebration will be streamed live at our Facebook and YouTube channel from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. We will be having Bishop Jurey Mora as our guest speaker. Pagdating naman po ng Sunday, all of our five services will be combined into one big service sa umaga. So from 9 a.m., to 12 noon, join us at our Facebook page and YouTube channel as we celebrate God's goodness and faithfulness. We will be having Pastor Jojo Henson as our guest speaker. Okay po ba? So pagdating po sa RBC Cable Master, yung anniversary po natin will be streamed as well at 10 a.m. So wag na po kayong uh, mag-attend ng uh, 2, 4, 6 p.m. kasi lahat po tayo magkakasama ng umaga. And another would be our limited edition t-shirts. We will only be accepting orders until November 30. So we have three shirt colors available. Moss green, our mustard yellow, and our beige shirt. Adult sizes cost 250 pesos and kids sizes cost 200 pesos. Please just go to Lighthouse Bagay Road, look for Miss Vanessa Lopez to give your orders. Pwede rin po kayo mag-order online sa ating Victory to Girl page. Just send us a private message. We are on pay as you order basis. Thank you so much. See you next Saturday and next Sunday. Good day everyone. Hope all, all of you are blessed by the word. And as I exhort you in our regular tithes and offering, uh, let me read you Psalm 84 verse 11. In NLT translation, it says here, For the Lord God is our sun, our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing to, from those who do what is right. Church, let me encourage you to continue doing what is right, to continue doing what is pleasing, and to continue doing what is honoring in the sight of God. Sa buhay natin, sa trabaho natin, sa pamilya natin, sa businesses natin. Now I believe natin, let us always choose to do what is honoring in the sight of God. 
And even as we give our tithes and offering today, you know what, church, we can please and honor God with it. Whatever will be the amount, for as long as tayo po'y magbibigay ng taus puso, the Lord will bless us. The Lord will uh, bring back a hundredfold return sa ating mga um, uh, sa, sa, sa ating offering ngayong araw na ito. For as long as we believe God for it, the Lord will open the floodgates of heaven for all of us to experience the abundance of His blessing. Amen? Let us pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your love and of your faithfulness sa bawat isa sa amin, Panginoon. And even as we give our tithes and offering today, O oh God, fill us with faith, believing that you are going to, to bless us a hundredfold, Lord Jesus. Bless even our heart as we give our tithes and offering today. We will fill with gladness. We will give with gladness. We will give uh, wholeheartedly, O oh God. Lord, we bless you. We honor you and glorify you, O oh God, by giving our tithes and offering. It is my prayer that you will bless our church. You will bless my brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Church, there, there are three ways for you to give your tithes and offering. First is by dropping your tithes and offering from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Lighthouse Luna Street, second floor, uh, in front of the home and office furniture. And at Victory Building by the road, second floor. Secondly, you can give through direct deposit or bank transfer, land bank to Gigarao. Details are flashed on the screen. Third, you can also give through GCAS. Just scan the code, flash, and send the screenshot of the transaction done through private message to Victory to Gigarao. The giving of the tithes and offering are for Victory members only, but if you are a guest, you are not obliged to give. But if you wish to do so, we pray that God will bless you. God bless us all. May the Lord bless you when you come in and when you go out. May the Lord bless you in the country and in the city. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Have a fruitful week ahead. God bless everyone. Praise and glory, honor and strength unto our God, unto our God, matchless, endless, more than restraint. This is our God, every time sing. Praise and glory, honor and strength unto our God, unto our God, matchless, endless, Hey guys, how's everyone doing? I hope you had a great classes last week. It was it's awesome. awesome. We were practicing how to dribble for basketball for our PE class. And our teachers teaching us other tricks too. It's different since we are not together at school, but we still had a lot of fun. What about you, Sean? Are you enjoying your PE class too? Sort of. I love basketball and the class has been great, even if we can play together. But I think I'd be more motivated if my parents got me these basketball shoes I've been asking for. What happened to your old shoes, by the way? Nothing happened to them. I still use them. Those new rubber shoes that my friend got looks extremely comfortable though. I'm sure I'll do better in my PE class with those shoes. My parents wouldn't buy me a new one. Ugh. I heard those shoes really help you jump higher. JJ, I have an idea. Let's ask our parents if they can get us those shoes too. Maybe I'll ask them. Before you end up having a long wish list for your parents in this call, I think this is the right time to share with you what Apostle Paul taught his disciple Timothy about being content. Let me share this one. It is true that serving God makes a person very rich if he's satisfied with what he has. When we came into the world, we brought nothing, and when we die, we can take nothing out. So if we have food and clothes, we will be satisfied with that. 
Those who want to become rich bring temptation to themselves. They are caught in a trap. They begin to want many foolish things that will hurt them. Things that ruin and destroy people. The love of money causes all kinds of evil. Some people have left the true faith because they want to get more and more money. But they have caused themselves much sorrow. Remember this. God blesses us with a lot of things. Everything that we need is pretty much around us. Sometimes we don't see it because we get blinded by what we want. Just like those shoes that you all wanted to get. Yes, your shoes now may look old and not as nice as the one you wanted, but you still get to play basketball wearing it. Hmm, wanting more is not, is not bad at, at all. But when we focus on what we do not have and stop appreciating what's in front of us, that's a different story. We may even feel that our parents or even God is holding out on us when we don't get what we want. Thanks, Coach. Uh, I think you're right. I shouldn't be greedy and ask for things I do not need. I'm grateful that I still get to do something I love because I, I have these shoes that I can wear while playing. Maybe we don't get to have new shoes now, but we shouldn't be upset about it. Instead, we should be grateful for what we have now. <laughs> exactly. Let's continue to trust God. We'll continue to provide our needs and that He knows what's best for us. So let's continue to be content and appreciate all these things that God has given us. For a bigger TV set, a newer gadget, more toys, or a bigger house? Well, it's not wrong to pray and ask for these things, but let's also be content and thankful for what we have. Now, look around you and say, I'm thankful for my family and what we have. Now, call your family and let's worship God together.
Father, thank you so much for knowing what we need even before we ask them. But thank you for allowing us to ask from you because you want a relationship with us. And thank you for giving us the faith to ask for big things. But also, I pray for a heart that's content and thankful for everything that we have because they, they are from you and you give them because you love them. You love us. And I pray, God, that as a way of thanking you with everything that you have given us that we would worship you and love you in jesus name we pray amen another way we can worship god is through our giving so you may give your tithes and offering by following the instructions flashed on the screen hey kids what's the best gift that you have ever received most of you will probably answer a gadget. I remember my excitement when I got my first ever mobile phone when I was 12 years old. It was a hand-me-down, good condition, Nokia 5110 for my parents. I was so happy. I was so grateful for it. I felt like it was the best gift ever. That didn't last long because weeks after, a newer model came out. And all of a sudden, I felt unhappy with the phone that I had. I felt it was old, even if it was just with me for less than a month. I kept asking, I kept begging my parents to get me the new model. And when they said no, I felt really bad. I felt like they were holding out on me. I didn't even stop to consider how blessed I already was since some of the kids my age didn't even have a mobile phone back then. How selfish of me. Have you ever experienced that? Not being appreciative of the nice things that you have just because you're so focused on the things that you do not have. That's what you call greed. 
And we have to be careful not to be consumed by this because greed blocks the joy that God wants to give us. And we don't want that. What's the antidote to greed? Paul shares it with his disciple Timothy in his letter. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to 10, it says, You gain a lot when you live a godly life, but you must be happy with what you have. We didn't bring anything into the world. We can't take anything out of it. If we have food and clothing, we will be happy with that. People who want to get rich are tempted. They fall into a trap. They are tripped up by wanting many foolish and harmful things. Those who live like that are dragged down by what they do. They are destroyed and die. Love for money causes all kinds of evil. Some people want to get rich. They have wandered away from the faith. They have wounded themselves with many sorrows. Paul was warning Timothy not to be greedy. Why? Because it leads to a sad life full of resentment and worse, it leads us to sin. In these verses, Paul talks about the dangers of loving money. Do you think money is bad? No, money is actually a blessing. We can use it to buy food, to pay for our tuition, to help those who are in need, and to advance God's kingdom. The love of money is what Paul asks us to stay away from because it can lead us to do bad things like stealing, lying, hurting others, or even more. What does Paul advise Timothy to do? Be happy with what you have. Be content. To be content means to be satisfied, to be thankful. What are some of the things that you are thankful for? Type it in the chat box. Your clothes, your shoes, toys, gadgets, your home, your friends, your family. Looking at all those things, can you say that you are blessed? We all are. You see, it's not hard to be content with the things that we have when we have a grateful heart. If you want to stay away from greed and the love of money, be thankful every day. Can you commit to do that? Can you say this with me? I will be happy with the things that God has given me. Again, I will be happy with the things that God has already given me. But this doesn't mean that we won't pray for more or we won't work for more. Of course, we can ask God for more. But while we wait, we will continue to appreciate the things that we do have. Just like when I was 12, I should have appreciated my Nokia 5110. It was a perfectly working phone. It was a blessing, but I wasn't able to enjoy it because I wanted the newer model, which really had the same features. It just looked different. Imagine having a lot of blessings, but not being able to enjoy them just because you're so focused on the new things that you don't have. Let me tell you kids, something new will always come out. If we keep chasing the new things, we will never be happy. Be grateful, be content. The key to this is knowing that we all have a perfect heavenly father who knows what we need even before we ask. He is generous and he is loving. That's why he will not withhold anything that we really need. If we don't have it at the moment, it just means that we don't need it. Have you ever given a gift to someone that they didn't appreciate? How did that feel? It feels bad, right? I hope we don't do that to God. I hope we appreciate everything that we have right now because we know that He is our perfect Father who gives us good gifts. I want you to know, because you have God in your life, you are blessed. We are all blessed. Let's remember our power truth for this series. God has blessed me to be a blessing. Let's say that again. God has blessed me to be a blessing. And our power verse comes from 2 Corinthians 9, 8, which says God can bless you with everything you need and you will always have more than enough to do all kinds of good things for others.
are blessed. And the key to experiencing contentment is to understanding that our happiness is found not in the things of this world, but is found in knowing that God is in our lives. And He blesses us in abundance, not just so that we can feel good, but so that we can be a blessing to other people as well. And we can give because we can follow the example of our perfectly heavenly Father who gave us His Son, Jesus Christ, so that we could enjoy all of these things. Jesus is our greatest blessing. And I pray that in every blessing, we would remember to share it with others so that they may come to the saving knowledge of Jesus as well. I'd like to pray for all of you. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for everything that we have. Thank you for our toys. Thank you for our family, our friends, our gadgets. We are all appreciative of these things. But Lord, on top of all of that, even without that, we are thankful because we have you as our perfectly heavenly Father. I pray, Lord God, that we would always appreciate that and it would always lead us to be grateful, knowing that all of these things we have are things that we don't deserve, but you decide to give us because you love us. Help us to have a thankful heart every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wait, don't leave yet. It's me, Teacher Mailing. Contentment is to be happy with what you have, who you are, and where you are. I have this phone and it's been with me for quite some time now. It's a blessing and I'm happy with it. With this phone, I can talk to my family, do quick work, order my favorite food. I can actually do so many things. Do I want a new phone? Well, there are newer smartphones that are out now and are way better. To be honest, I would be so happy to have a new phone, of course. But that doesn't mean I can't be happy with what I have now. How about you? For our family con, what is one thing that you're really praying for right now? And how would you feel if you didn't get it? That's all for today. See you next week. Bye! Welcome to Craft Time with Teacher Plum. That's me. Shout out to my friends who are worshipping with us. Chichi and Gab, Summer and Tyrone Nazareth, and Alpha Leon Falsgun. Hi kids! I am excited for today's craft, but before we get creative, let's look at your artwork from last week. It's raffle time! Again, just to remind everyone, these are the goodies that you can win if you win the raffle. So we have two sticker packs, a pack of fuzzy wires for craft, sticky notes, a tea light or an LED light, a pack of markers, a wallet, an emoji wallet, and a pack of construction paper all in this red envelope. Now it's time to draw the names from our black box. Okay, let's draw winner number one. Congratulations to Cheyenne and Frederick, care of Anne Bacho. Congratulations! Winner number two, of course! somebody who always submits, Janet De La Sena. And I think this is Bella Gulfo, correct me if I'm wrong. And the third winner is from Rafa and Shelly. Congratulations, winners. You each get a pack of craft materials in this red envelope. Please expect an email in your inbox this week. Now we learn today to be contented with what we have. And to remind us to be contented, let's make a bank book. A bank book is a little booklet that records all the money that you have in your bank account. It's like you're counting your financial blessings. But blessings come in so many forms, not just money. So let's make our little bank book of life. To make this craft, we will need some board paper. I'm using green board paper. We we'll also need some bond paper, a few pages. I think five pages is enough. We'll also need some scissors, a stapler, oops, a stapler, and make sure that your stapler has staple wire. And optional is 
you can use some stickers! We'll also need some markers or a pen or a pencil. Let's begin! The first thing that we want to do is take our pieces of bond paper and cut them in one-fourth sheets of paper. So fold them first. If you have a cutter, you can ask help from your mom or your dad or your ate or your, your kuya to help you cut these pieces of paper. And you should end up with something like this. See, you have pieces of one-fourth sheets of paper. Now set these aside. And from your board paper, cut one-fourth sheet of paper too. So we'll only need one piece of this. Now let's assemble our bank book. Take your board paper and fold it in half. And this will become our booklet. We have... Ta-da! And take your sheets of paper and fold them in half as well. Make sure they're nice and folded. Now, next step is let's align this to our board paper. Now, as you can see, the bond paper is a bit bigger than our board paper. So it's okay. We can just cut a few millimeters off our paper so it fits inside our cover. Also cut the one on this side. And now it fits perfectly. Now as you align these sheets of paper with the board paper, take your stapler and staple it right in the center of our booklet or our bank book. So if your staple can't reach that center, you can always cut more from the back book. I am gonna be cutting more so my staple can reach. So now I'm done resizing my back book to a smaller size so my staple can reach the center of this paper. I'll take my back book and take my stapler and staple the center like this. Now fold it in the middle and see how it looks. So now that you stapled your paper in the center, there's gonna be an excess portion over here which you can always cut just so everything is nice and neat. Now we can decorate our cover. So for my back book of life, I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna use this marker and I'm gonna write Plum's Bank Book of Life. And of course, to make it extra pretty, I'm gonna put some stickers on it and I'm gonna use my favorite dinosaur stickers. Put the yellow dinosaur. Let's put a dino egg, a heart. If you have a longer stapler, you can be you can make a bigger bank book. But since we have this standard size, we can only make this smaller sized bank book. But it still looks super duper cute and you actually made your own notebook. And ta-da! We're now done with our bank books of life. It says Plum's Bank Book of Life. And just like how banks count our money, let's count our blessings. So inside this bank book, put in everything that you are grateful for in your life. Let me start. I am grateful for, hmm, the money that I receive every month from my job. Oh, and I'm also grateful for my job. Also, I'm grateful for the food that we were sent the other day. And I'm grateful for my nephew, Benjamin. And the list goes on and on and on. So let's count our blessings using our craft for today. It's going to be so much fun. Every day, 
open your bank book of life and write down on one page of your bank book one blessing you are grateful to God for. You can also draw it if you're good in drawing. So instead of uh, writing house, you can draw your house maybe in your bank book of life, whichever you prefer. Counting our blessings makes us realize that God has already blessed us with so, so much. And when we are happy and grateful with what we already have, that makes us contented. I can't wait to see your versions of this craft. This bank book is very, very tiny. It's tinier than the actual bank books that we see in banks, but it's yours and it's your personal bank book of life. Remember to send your photos with your craft to our email address flashed on the screen. That's kidsfort at victory.org.ph. Photos you send to our email address will be automatically featured in next week's online worship service. And you'll also receive one raffle entry for our raffle for the month of November. Parents, please take your photos in portrait mode and submit them by Monday, 5 p.m. Philippine time. See you next week, kids. Bye!